Uh, bread is challenged, as in physics, uh, to do something with an egg. And uh, coming from the world of particle physics, what can you do with a Cadbury's cream egg? And I thought about it. I, th I don't want to miss out on this opportunity. And then I recalled something where the shape of an egg is important in particle physics. And that's in trying to explain why the cosmological constant is zero. So the cosmological constant is a term that's present in Einstein's equations. And its effect is to cause the universe to accel accelerate today. Until about the mid-90s, we didn't even know the universe was doing this. The universe, we thought, was decelerating. So that although these galaxies were moving apart, they were actually slowing down because the force of attraction due to gravity was slowing them down. And so we were all very happy that this term that could be there, the cosmological constant, was actually zero. It, it wasn't playing any role. But at the turn of the 1990s and then towards the end of the 1990s, it became clear the universe seems to have this term. It's not zero, it is there, but with a very small value. Still close to zero, but a small positive value. And the big problem is actually to try and explain this value. So where does the egg come in? So in the, in the world of particle physics, one of the approaches that we take is that we're, uh, uh, we let our imaginations run free and we say maybe there's more than four space-time dimensions. We usually think of four, we, we think of time, and then three space, x, y, and z. But in some scenarios, especially those coming from string theory, there can be as many as ten. And, uh, but a, a simpler version that has been put forward uh, as, a, as a toy model, really, not to try and really explain the, the universe, but to try and get some of the features of the extra dimension, is one where there are six. That's called the, the six-dimensional gauged chiral supergravity model, or the Cadbury's egg model. So that's perhaps what they should have called them, because, of course, they're extra dimensions. So here's my hand. Here's my, my hand is representing the four space-time dimensions that we, that we live in, that we perceive. Of course, I've, I've had to get rid of two of them because I've only got two here. So I've got rid of a time and I've got rid of a position. For every point on this surface, which is called a, a brain, every point on this surface, there is another two dimensions coming out. Instead of the universe being four-dimensional, in other words, you have time, x, y, and z, I'd have two more coordinates. I could call them, they're typically called rho and theta. And these extra two coordinates, so every place in, in the universe, there's six coordinates explaining that particular point. So here, at this point here, there'd also be, be these two extra dimensions coming out with a particular value of, of rho and a particular value of theta. And, and, and rho takes me from this end of the egg to that end of the egg, and theta takes me around the egg. So those are the extra coordinates. So the importance of the egg shape, as opposed to a, a soccer ball, which is a, a sphere, is that there's a particular curvature associated with this egg, a particular way that it's curved around. And it's that particular shape which allows the energy associated with that curve, space, to cancel out the cosmological constant, leaving me with zero cosmological constant in the four dimensions. And then what I then use is quantum mechanics to generate a very small cosmological constant. But the key ingredient of the egg is that it actually provides me with a nice mechanism to cancel out the underlying cosmological constant, leaving me with zero on the, on the four dimensions that we live in. And then what I can use is the world of quantum mechanics to actually generate a very small cosmological constant. We haven't yet solved that properly. St that's still going on. The cosmological constant problem, you know, why the universe has the value it has for the cosmological constant, still remains one of the, the big problems in theoretical physics. In order for the um, cancellation to occur, you can actually work out and to occur at the right value and then to give me the, the, the masses of the particles that we see. You can work out what the typical size of this egg would be. And the typical size of this egg, or, or of the extra dimensions, is about 10 microns. That's really big. Remember that the, the uh, size of an atom is about an angstrom. That's 10 to the minus 10 meters. This is about 10 to the minus 5 meters. So it's easily within the range that we can see. So why have we not ruled this egg idea out already? So the reason this hasn't yet been ruled out is that the forces of nature that we experience, that's the strong force, the weak force, the electromagnetic forces, 
they are all confined to live on the brain. They can't propagate into this extra dimension. In particular, electromagnetism can't, so light can't. Light can't get into this extra dimension. The only force that's left that we're aware of that can get into the extra dimension is gravity. And it leaks from the brain into the extra dimension. So we'll have to probe for this extra dimension through gravitational effects. And the, con and the, the constraints on these models from gravity are very weak. And so believe it or not, it is possible that there could be an extra dimension around us that has a scale of about 50 microns, and we haven't yet detected it. But you guys are pretty good at measuring gravity, aren't you? You mean, you, you know, you guys measure gravity all the time in the course of your work. Why wouldn't you be able to measure this seeping gravity, which is escaping out into the eggs? Um, because it's such a weak force. So gravity is, is a very weak interaction. And th this is one of the explanations, actually, why it is weak, that some of it's sleeping out. And, and what we're left with is, is the gravity in, 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 in the brain.